Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome back, baseball family, to another episode of the Baseball Together podcast. We, as always, are very excited to be here with you today. And Brad is here, too, by the way. What's up, baseball family? (laughs) Today, we're going to cover a whole heap of current events because baseball is on, and that's what you want, and so that's what you're going to get. And then, we are going to talk about future events, and I'm talking way too far in the future uh and then and then we're going to scale it back and talk about the near future because there's some stuff coming that we want you to know about concerning the trade deadline so that's a tease for segment three stay tuned to the rest of the episode and brad let's get into this let's do it specifically uh let's open with our favorite topic how do you feel about that (laughs) absolutely (laughs) no better way to get going (laughs) yes sir well, let's just take this. How about we just take the garbage out is, I think, the best way. A little <laughs> housekeeping. Okay. A little housekeeping. Yeah. Uh, Rob Manfred. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can move on. <laughs> no, I, it is. Okay. <laughs> he says that he says that his COVID protocols are working. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. It's It's him. <laughs> He's he's yeah. the one. He's the reason it's working, because they're oh, his yeah. protocols. Just, just ask him. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Luke. Guess whose fault it is when it doesn't work? The players. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> granted, like, yes, some I mean, players went out in Atlanta. Okay. Like we said last week, they may have gone to Magic City. They may have gone to Burger King. We don't know. Well. And then you've yeah. got some players who. It was reported went to a casino with the Cardinals. They're refuting that, cards. saying it's not true. What did I say? Did I say Cardinals? No, you're right. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. agreeing with you. Okay, Sorry. yeah. So, I don't know what to believe there, but at the same time, just today, they were supposed to start playing again, but there was another positive test. Yeah. So, something. I don't. I don't know if it's something about the protocols that isn't working there. Or if it's something with the Cardinals that isn't working there, I don't know. But I hesitate to pin anything on the Cardinals organization ever. Right. Yeah. Because they're a tight ship, man. I mean, they they mm-hmm. they have given no indication until now of any infractions. They have no discipline problems. They have no, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I mean. I mean, they, they it's, it's a tight ship down there, and yeah. they're. They're always good. You know, they're always steady. Mm -hmm. They're always, I don't know, reliable is probably the appropriate word. But I just have a ton of respect for the Cardinals organization. And so to see them get drugged across the coals here on this doesn't make any sense to me. It feels incongruous, and it honestly bothers me. Yeah, I agree. It's out of character for something that you would think with the Cardinals because they have, like we've said, they have that that good – culture top to bottom that they've developed and i don't know it's yeah i'm not sure what happened how things went down whatever but i mean they're not playing baseball right now because of it as of friday night the seventh so yes yeah yeah. and that's problematic for a lot of teams not Mm -hmm. just the cards and see that's the collective repercussion thing i mean i think it was even was it yesterday they came out and they with the uh the adjusted schedule with with games, yeah. you know, going in September where they're going to make up series and things like that. And so right. they're going to they're going to have to keep doing more of that because you know, you've got like we said, you've got the Cardinals right now who aren't playing and and whoever's supposed to be playing them this weekend and probably possibly even into next week. You know, those are those yeah. are games that are going to be postponed. So it's going to get tough to start rescheduling games and you can only do it so much. Right. But, that's but we'll that see. takes us back to our our next or our, our our previous question about who wins, right? I mean, are we going to really – when is enough enough, and how can we use win percentage to factor in who actually makes the playoffs mm-hmm. uh, and who is seeded at what level? Because, I mean, honestly, if you play fewer games, it is advantageous to your win percentage. It right. just is. It, yeah, yeah, it totally is. And, you know, I was actually thinking about that, that the other day, about how that might work. And it's like there's a certain – maybe there's a certain threshold you have to reach – to be yeah. eligible for a level in the playoffs. You know, you can't win the division if you've played less than 
uh, 53 games or something like that. Um, and then you yeah, can't but be they owed. didn't stipulate that. No, I know, but they're changing the rules as they go anyway. They're constantly changing the rules. They changed to that, seven inning double headers. They changed. Yeah, they expanded right. the playoffs the first day of the season. So that's right. Yeah, I don't see why okay. they can't change the rules. They can't add that stipulation partway through because they're they're doing it as we go, making up the rules yeah. as we as they go. So, so you know, like I said, I don't know if you're you're ineligible to win the division if you play less than fifty three games. If you play less than fifty, you're ineligible for the playoffs. I don't know. That's something I would do to get these teams actually encouraged to. A, follow the rules, and B, make sure they get everybody healthy and keep them healthy so they can play as many games as possible. Because like yeah. you said, it is advantageous to play less games because you have to win less to get a better winning percentage. So, right. Yeah, I, I don't know. you got to put a little been, carrot there, I feel like. Yeah, I've been worried about that. And the more widespread this becomes, especially in Miami, that's the prime example right now, mm -hmm. then uh, what what happens you know, and, and not that Miami's contending right now anyway, but their win percentage has been high because oh, they yeah. play fewer games. They're sitting on top of the NL East right now at six and one. I know. And so I'm like, granted, yeah, they're they're winning they've won a bunch of games, but at the same time, they've played <laughs> way fewer games. I mean they've had they've played half as many games as the Braves. The Braves are nine and five, the Marlins are six that's and right. one. That's right. That's exactly right. So, and that's criminal. Yeah. Yeah, the Braves yeah. are on a roll right now. I mean, they are they're looking pretty good. I mean, they've got problems. Everybody has problems right now. Oh, That's yeah. not yeah. unique. But I mean, they are looking good. And they're so, seven, seven and three of their last ten to to back up your yeah. argument there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. So, yeah. question number two, and this is a question you posed: Is mm -hmm. Shohei Otani is his pitching career over? Maybe just so, this season. Is it over for this season? He, he's they've they've shut him down pitching the rest of the season. But what yeah. I want to know, Brig, is a guy who so he's got that forearm issue this yeah. season, and I feel like a forearm is the first step to Tommy John. He's had it right. once. He had it in 2018. That's right. He already had it. Yeah. And I mean, he's only he's only had two two starts since coming back. And if he's already having another issue with Tommy John, I mean, there are guys who have it twice. Brian Wilson yeah. had it twice. It ended his career, right? Yeah. No, he yes. came back. He just he just wasn't as good. But but still, he had it twice and he wasn't as good. But it so was if, the end. Yeah. If I am if I am the Angels, I am saying, you know what? You'd make a great right fielder for us because we love you your go. bat. Love it. Stick him in right field. He's got yeah. he's got speed. He's got size. He's got an, he obviously got an arm. And you oh, yeah. want you want that bat in the lineup as much as you can get it. Take him off yeah. the mound. Take him off the mound. I think as much I of a bummer as it is. As much of a bummer I as it know. is because you know he he throws that nasty fork. But maybe bring him in if you're desperate. But at the same time, you run the risk of his of his elbow blowing up again. Well, and it's too bad he's twelve. You know that's that. I think that's the real criminal <laughs> per situation here. <laughs> He said, tongue firmly in his cheek. Okay. He does. He so. does. He does look like he's tall. <laughs> he's just 80 feet tall. It's fine. Yeah, I know. The, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But his pitching's not going great. And speaking of mm -hmm. pitching, um, we had some poopy pantsery this week. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. It goes way beyond curmudgeonery. Yeah, I, I think poopy pantsery is definitely what was going on here. <laughs> so yeah. Lance Lance McCullers <laughs> says that uh, the Diamondbacks opening the roof mid game was criminal. He well, he called it something well, else, but well, we we can say it. It's quote can we? is, is it fair? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it, you're gonna make me blush, it, Brad. If no. it falls under the Carlin rules, so we're good. Um, <laughs> that's right the carlin rules <laughs> but no yeah, like that's, that's what he said and and quite <laughs> frankly i'm sick of lance mccullers already and we're two weeks into the season right the dude needs to shut his mouth shut up yeah because because he's the one who called joe kelly quote unquote unprofessional for throwing yeah. at his teammates like hey lance you know what else is unprofessional freaking cheating man <laughs> yeah that's what is unprofessional maybe look at look at the guys in your clubhouse about that and yeah. before you say anything about joe kelly trying to police the game right so the way it's anyways. been done for a hundred years yeah and oh by <laughs> exactly. the way most of us are still okay with it 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. Not everybody. But anyways. Not all of us. But a lot of people are still yeah. fine with little chin music. Yeah, for sure. So so I digress. But no, like yeah. you were saying, Lance McCuller <laughs> said that about the Diamondbacks opening the roof in the middle of the game. They opened it after the third inning. Yeah. And, and Dusty Baker, without throwing his player under the bus, said, <laughs> he's like, well, we were told before the game that they were going to open the roof. But we just weren't told when. Yeah. And it's like, I get it. I kind of I kind of get it a little bit because um, it was 107 when the game started. <laughs> right. But I mean, it could have been worse. It's 115 earlier in the day. So, right. Whatever. Right. Well, you're there but, now. So you're. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. 107 is actually quite nice compared to what it has been. <laughs> so. <laughs> Boy, a little I would bit kill brisk. for That's sweatshirt weather. <laughs> and I think, honestly, by the time they got to the third inning, it was down to around 100. I mean, that's, I'm about ready to put on a sweatshirt at 100 these days. <laughs> but. Um, but no, you've been there three days. You're already acclimated, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to go. <laughs> hey, it, it, it's adapt or die around here. So you got, you've got to <laughs> adapt or die. Oh. That's great. That's great. Put that on a t-shirt. I wish I knew yeah, somebody could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, his, his real complaint was that that the ball starts to fly when the roof is open, which makes sense. It's yeah. hot. It's going to carry the ball. Yeah. It's dry. So you don't changes. have yeah. humidity beating the air down. So, yeah. like, I get the I get the complaint from the pitchers, but the D backs have to deal with it too, right? And you then know, the, like, both teams combined for seven homers as soon as they open the the roof, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like maybe teach your guys how to hit without knowing what's coming, and and you'll get a win still. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh no, because as we've seen, that's yeah. not going well. <laughs> no, it is going very poorly. Yeah. Um I I in fact I'm so surprised at the at the yeah. I, I, how how badly it's, it's going. So bad. It's so bad. And I'm so happy about it. I just Oh, I know. I know. I just can't help myself. I I, I need know. more I need the Astros to get more hits. And by hits I mean hits by pitch. So <laughs> I just am not going to apologize. I just need more of that. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Those are the only hits they're allowed to get this year. Hits by pitch. Yeah. Take a base. Yeah. Take them. Take your base. Pff, what do I care? <laughs> I don't care about your kids. Take your base. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, we should move on. So uh. <laughs> Aaron Judge Aaron Judge went on a tear and hit I don't I should know this right off the top of my head, but I think it was five homers in the first five games. Um, or six yeah. homers in the first five games, something like that. I mean, the guy is just an animal, and we're finally seeing him in fine form. His his mm-hmm. wrist is healed. Everything's going well. Um, and things wrist, in New York rib, look nice. Everything. <laughs> What's that? Wrist, rib, lung, every, you know, yeah. whatever else it was it's, that he was. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the guy's 900 feet tall, so there I go. He is, yeah. Speaking in hyperbole yeah. again. But, I mean, the guy is really just <laughs> enormous. And uh, that's got to be a lot of wear and tear just to be him. Just being him yeah. must be hard mm-hmm. on his body. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. But, I, you know, after the probably the third home run, I was like, well, gee, there's somebody you can point to immediately who benefited from the late start to the season. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, for he, sure. Because he wasn't starting. The, he wasn't ready to play. He wasn't playing in spring training. He wasn't going to be ready for opening day. Yeah. And then now they give him all this time to get healed and, and – prepare and he sure did yeah he took he advantage did. of every minute of it yeah and it's it's, man, it's really fun there. yeah it's really fun. Yeah, it's I, cool i think it's cool i think it's neat beyond just you know the yankees fans and all that i think that there's been so much hype around aaron judge and you know to mm-hmm. see him live up to that is really appealing so which yeah. brings me to my next point if you consider mike trout in the same situation lots of mm-hmm. hype lots of this it, and extremely justified you know yeah hype but he uh this is interesting i i got this on a headline today i thought was i'd share uh, mike trout mm-hmm. has played seven times on his birthday seven times on his birthday mm-hmm. okay and in five of those seven times he has had a home run so i thought that was pretty cool the fifth one in the series was today so yeah it's, it's friday the seventh and and I thought that was that was pretty neat. We don't highlight home runs too often on this show because we think small ball is where it's at. But 
there are right. occasions where their the home run game is is very appealing. So those you know, a couple of those. Yeah. I think Mike Trout's the bomb, honestly. And when he drops them, so, drops some bombs, it's even better. <laughs> unless it's in Seattle, which he seems to do. Listen, all the time. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I saw somebody. I saw somebody comment on because seriously, he hit like three home run, like three or four home runs in three games. Because right. one, I know, I know for a fact he hit two in one game. Yeah. But there was somebody I was I was on Instagram and somebody commented on one of the home runs on the po- on the MLB post. They said, "Hey, Mariners fans, just calm down. It's <laughs> just payback from us." Taking a beating all those years from Griffey. It's like, oh, well, all right. I can't okay. be so upset anymore. All right. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are certain places where a player goes and you know he's going to go yard. That's right. For Griffey, it was – Anaheim was one of one of the many places. And for Trout, Seattle happens to be one of the many places. Yeah. So I guess I'm just – Take it on the chin and go. A little I quid guess, to know. the pro quo there, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Mike Trout on his birthday, let's 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 do a little bit of Mike Trout trivia. Okay. Oh no. Brig. No. Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. How many times? The, how many times? Word. <laughs> <laughs> how many times do you think? How many times do you think Mike Trout has finished outside of the top five in the MVP voting? Oh. How many times has he been eligible? Like eight? One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. Eight times. Yes. He's been eligible. Yes. Nice. Let that be the answer to my trivia question <laughs> and let's move on. You th- <laughs> so you think he's finished outside of the top five? No, 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 no. I wanted to know how many times he's been eligible and then I nailed it and I think I should get off scot free now. That's what I'm oh. saying. <laughs> I, should, I, should I see. I see what you did there. You, okay. Well, the answer, if if the answer, if the question had been, how many times has he finished inside the top five? You'd be right with eight. Oh, right. He's never finished outside the top five with MVP voting. I, I don't doubt that. Actually, even as a rookie, he won the rookie of the year and finished second. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Has Man, anybody that's... ever won rookie of the year and MVP at the same time? No. That's an excellent question. Maybe we'll look that up in the break and we'll come back. Yeah, up let's do that. How about that? Yeah, well, let's All take right. a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to jump way inordinately far into the future. And we'll be right back. No matter which ballpark you're at, you want to rep your team. Now you can with nine plus us. Welcome to the Big City Series. With every design available in your team's colors, you can fit in with the home crowd or stand out on the road. Either way, we have the colors you crave. Shop the Big City Series and find designs that rep your favorite baseball podcast, cheer from the cheap seats, and much more. Shop the Big City Series only at 9plusus.com. Welcome back, baseball family. So we did a little bit of research, a little bit of poking around, and we found the answer to the question that we had asked before the break. So there are two guys who have won the Rookie of the Year and the MVP in the same year. Brig, you want to go ahead? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first is uh, Fred Lynn. There you go. The Boston yeah. Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the second one we should have known. The second one we, we should have known. We feel so bad. I was trying to avoid I know. bringing it up and the, at all. That's the thing that upsets me is that I knew it. I just brain farted. That's, that's all it was. You're bringing forward pretty hard there because mine yeah, did too, and that's okay. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, the second one was Ichiro. Yes. And I mean, I Ugh. that that should be the front of my mind because that was the 2001 season, and maybe yeah. I'm just blocking stuff out from that season because it's so painful still. But hey, I don't. Whoa, know. it wasn't that bad. Well, the fact they won 116 games and didn't win the World Series, yeah, that's pretty painful. Hey, we didn't win the World Series that year either. Okay, so it's fine. <laughs> Just kidding. That's, that was actually a pretty good moment, so that's fine. You loved it. It was redemptive uh, for you, wasn't it? it? It was, actually. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little oh bit redemptive. But, Stop. But then, a okay. little bonus <laughs> on top of that was... Yeah, the bonus uh, is the best, actually. Go ahead. So, Fernando Valenzuela is the only guy to win Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young. That was in 1980 with, obviously, the Dodgers. And the Cy so, Young. Wow! Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's amazing. Unreal. And something that's interesting about this, though, is that Fred Lynn and Fernando Valenzuela both had 
games before their true rookie season where they came up yes. and they played. Same thing with Mike Trout. Mike Trout played 40 games in his first season, and then he still had his, they had still had their rookie status intact because he had to play a certain amount of games, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 then blah, their right. second, their second actual season, their first full season of the big leagues, is when they won their awards. But Ichiro came in fresh. I mean, first season seeing big just league like pitching, clean. and he comes yeah. in and just takes the league by storm. Wins Rookie of the Year MVP, and that's that's why I should remember it because I remember watching him hit the first time, just like, what just happened there? No. Who's this guy? So it was magical. And it, it was magical, magical for a very long time. Yes, very long time, maybe longer than a lot of us thought. But Long, anywho, longer than we deserved. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's just so, the truth. <clears throat> speaking of long time, Brig, let's let's hop in our uh, our little <laughs> time cool. machine here. Yeah, let's do it. And and let's go. Let's go forward in time. Okay. Forward. How many big league fans? How many major league baseball fans do we think are already looking forward to the twenty twenty one season where? It's likely we're going to have a full season. Everything, hopefully, will be back to back to normal. At least we can. At that point, I'm planning on going to games. Wilson and I are already planning on spring training in March. That might be oh, wishful yeah. thinking, but we're planning on it. Um, Dude, I I'm planning to be there, yo. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, like, I'm I, coming with you. You know what I'm sweet saying? Sweet deal. Do it. Yeah. Yes. Come on I'm out. We'll go it. to several <laughs> games. We're, we're down the street from we're down the street from the Peoria Sports Complex, Camelback Ranch Park. We went out out and actually drove by a Surprise Stadium today. We're yeah. we're by all of it. We can go where we can go wherever you want. I don't care. That was but well then, said Brig, well edited. Yes, sir. Go ahead. How, how many people? <laughs> how many people are looking forward to 2022? Do you think? Well, I mean, listen, that's a ways out. Listen, let me tell you about 2022. Okay. The only thing. We know about 2022 is that it is in jeopardy. That's it. Yeah. Because of the collective bargaining agreement. But what I want to know is who is looking forward to 2022 in terms of prospects. And here's why I ask, mm -hmm. right? You ready for this? Okay. I got a notification today from MLB. And the headline read, who is your number one prospect in 22? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Can you what? Could, you, could, did I read that do you right? Know, do you know who the Yankees' number one prospect will be in 2022? No. <laughs> no. I have no idea. Do you? I'm worried about Brett Gardner leaving right now. Like I've. Oh like, yeah, there's that. You know what I mean? I got. I, I yeah, got other problems. Fry. Yeah. Yeah, and see, my thing is like, if he's not called up next year. Or even 2022, which he'll, I'm sure this guy will likely be in the big leagues for 2022, but I'm quite certain that if he is still in the minors at that point, Julio Rodriguez will be the top prospect in the Mariners, uh, in the Mariners farm system. For sure. Because, I mean, I, I've seen him play a couple of, minor, a couple of uh, spring training games, and he's, like I said last week, he's a legit pickle. So, mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the real deal. The legit so. pick. The real deal. Yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's real good. He's gonna he's gonna be the top prospect if he's still in the minor leagues by then. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to keep him down that long. Other okay, than that, so, I don't know. Maybe George Kirby, but he could so, be in the big leagues by then too. All right. So here we've already got a division between you and I. I don't care about prospects, you do. That's the first very clear delineation in the demographics of baseball fans. I'm not saying one is better than the other, one is right or wrong, not getting any mm -hmm. any of that. Just saying that there is a, a certain level of awareness that's going into how you interact with baseball and how I interact with baseball. It's very different, right? And and so, it's because of the build of the teams. It's because you got a big big market team that can pl that can pay guys that yeah. are already experienced, and I've got a small market team that can't isn't going to attract the big name guys. So they have to build through their farm system. That's right. And that, that's really what it comes down to, and that's that's why you have no idea who's in the Yankees farm system and why I know just about everybody. In the farm okay. system. <laughs> yeah, but w while I agree that there is a definitive cultural thing going on, I also will tell you that when when Miguel Andujar and Glaber Torres and guys like that were in the farm system, I knew about uh -huh. it. But, but that was because of the tremendous press they got. I didn't have to go look for it. The Yankees told yeah. me, right? The Yankees did all yeah. of the canvassing or campaigning or whatever you want to call it digitally for me. And, mm -hmm. which I'm sure the Mariners are doing with you and your fan base. Um, right. It just doesn't happen 
too often with the Yankees fans. And I'm sure it's right. there's probably this huge spectrum in between with all these other teams. But what kills me, you ready for this? What kills oh, I'm ready. Me, I'm ready. The article went on. <laughs> <laughs> the article went on to not just ask you who, if you knew or not, who the number one prospect in your organization would be in 2022, but who it would be at the midpoint of 2022. <laughs> and at that point, I was like, I've had it. I don't know. Listen, first of all, I don't care. And second of all, who cares? Like, why? Who? So, and and that's me. I don't care. But how many other fans are looking that far ahead. Like if you're gambling on this, I got it. Okay. You're playing the odds. <laughs> you got all this opinion. You're doing fantasy sports and stuff like that. Fine. Maybe you're playing fantasy sports three years, two years in the future, two and a half. That's good. Good for you. I don't. Hey, if so, you're in a keeper league, you've got to build your minor league system, right? That's how that works. That's right. That's how you win. It's sustainable. So I, that's what I'm saying. Like, who are these people? <laughs> That that headline was geared to attract. It wasn't me, but I was aghast. I was like, what is happening? So I opened it and read it like confused. I was like, the whole time I read the article, I'm like, what's going on? Why why do we care? And so I'm I'm genuinely asking from a position of whatever this is, I'm you can call it whatever you want. I'm a Yankees fan, you can uh -huh. call it superiority. <laughs> but I'm just saying <laughs> Sorry, I had to plug that. I was mean spirited. I didn't mean to do that. But the, the <laughs> <laughs> the point the point is do brad are there people are there is this a demographic of baseball fandom that i don't understand and that is ex thriving you know um yes and no like as like i said i know the mariners farm system just because the mariners are not good right <laughs> i i want something to look forward to in the future like you had them making the yeah. wild card this year the yeah, reason I, I did not is because they're so young. Because these are guys that I've been paying attention to, been like, okay, this is the team that's supposed to win a World Series. These are the, these are the guys that are supposed to win a World Series. It's not going to happen this year. It probably won't happen next year. Probably two, three years down the road, maybe twenty twenty two. I don't know. Maybe if that's the year that'll happen when they have when everybody gets up and yeah. that is the team that is built. They will be very, very good, and that's the potential. So okay. that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm I'm watching as these guys come up to like that's what i have to look forward to you have a team at the big league level that's pretty much a world series favorite this year yeah you I have mean. absolutely zero reason to look at anything lower than the big league level because yeah. you've got aaron judge you've you know you've got luke Voigt, you've got uh, <clears throat> uh dj lemayhew up there you know you've you've got john carlos DJ's stanton you've got the guys who who can win a world series yes. this year yes whereas you know, me and the Astros did this for a long time, too. This, this is how they won a World Series, was they said, these are the guys that are going to carry us to the promised land. This is who they are. They highlight them because yeah. nobody cares at the big league level if you're losing 110 games a year. That's what the Cubs did leading up to 2016. Yeah. It was a four- yeah. or five-year yeah, exactly. campaign. Yeah, I, I get yep, it. Yeah, for sure. I, I and I'm sure that the Cubs were spoon-feeding their fans their prospects, mm. you know, saying, come see these guys at the big league level because it's big league baseball. But – Pay attention to these guys because they're the ones who are going to win us a World Series. Okay. And that's what the Mariners have been doing with me, and I've been paying close attention because I I actually have more fun watching, like the last couple of years, had more fun watching highlights from the guys in double and triple A uh -huh. than I did watching the big league guys because it was such a mess. That's why I know who they are. And that's part of the reason I, I wanted to go to spring training this year is because I didn't care who was on the big league roster this year for the most part. I was curious who of the minor leaguers and the prospects I was going to see. And – Hmm. which of those guys might get big league time this year. I knew Kyle Lewis was going to make the opening day roster. So I wanted to go see him play, yeah. you know, and as Wilson and I were walking around um, the backfields, we met guys that I had read about. I hadn't actually seen their picture. I looked on the back of their Jersey and I recognized the name, Ah, you know? So, so that was, that's actually like, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. kind of how it works with a Mariners fan right now. And that's why they wrote the 2022 article. But also I think, I think that article was probably pitched back in like May. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and it took them that long to get it together. <laughs> well, so the, yeah. it's like, well, you don't know when we're going to have baseball. So how about this? Let's look forward to 2022. And it'll take me probably till uh, the end of July, beginning of August to get it together. That's fine. 
it'll work it'll work <laughs> that editor is just glad to have content and that's fine exactly so exactly right but that's an interesting insight and i i appreciate the perspective you brought to the table not that i you know i don't know i just i just didn't i was so shocked by it uh, it's just outside <laughs> and maybe you're right maybe i am caught up in the moment and i am living more in the well, and, and there's day nothing day wrong day. with it there's nothing wrong with no. it it's just having a team that's built differently because even with the yankees you don't necessarily need your farm team because you can attract free agents you can pay guys yeah. because wh while that's baseball terrible, doesn't have yeah. an actual hard salary cap they have the luxury tax which teams some teams won't go into yeah, um, that's right. The Red Sox, the reason they traded Mookie Betts and David Price is because they didn't want to be in the luxury tax that third year when the penalties are, like, exponential. Yes. They got rid of them. The Yankees have so much money that they don't really care, well, it seems like. Yeah, it seems that way, you for know? sure. Well, yeah. Could, yeah, but, I know. And yeah, I just So you can live in the moment with the big league roster every year, but there are some of us who can't. Yeah, that's good. That's good perspective. I appreciate that. So yeah. well, and and so the information I have about the Cubs came from the book Cubs Way. Mm -hmm. For those, yeah. I mean, we plug it all the time. It's probably the best baseball book I've ever read. And yeah, we read baseball books. I mean, almost compulsively. So, um, yeah, you know, take it for what it's worth. But we, yeah, both Brad and I really loved it. And if you haven't read it yet, and you want a, kind of a greater amount of insight into how this goes with building your farm system starting literally from zero um and projecting mm -hmm. it into you know five four or five years into the future that that's a great insight it also you know mm -hmm. joe madden is a genius and so is theo epstein and all this other stuff but yeah yeah it's yeah. that's where if you if you want to get that, an that idea. book goes into um like he's projecting like i think i had talked about i think i've talked about this one time before on on some podcast episode way back when i don't know exactly when it was but anyways yeah. about how what it takes is calculating like if you're in the al west this is i think this is the exact example i used if you're in the al west you say okay we're projecting that the astros are not going to be able to pay their stars in 2022 so they will be down right so the division will be open where can we plug our prospects how can we get these guys on track to be big league ready and ready to win in 2022 right when the Astros that's what Cubs way goes into. Yes. Yes, exactly. And that, <clears throat> that's what Cubs way goes into. And it's really interesting to see the whole process of how they did that. It's, it's super cool. Yeah, it was super cool. So anyway, baseball family, we want to know what you think. So jump into the doobly doo and, or leave us a comment with your podcast app and, and let us know, what do you think do, is your team? Is this the market you're dealing with? Are you having these same problems? Um, are you having mm -hmm. these same projections? Are you looking forward this far? Is it farther than this or further rather than this? Is it, <laughs> you know, what, it, what is it? How, how do you interact with this idea of waiting till 2022 or mm -hmm. more longer, you know? So we want to know. Yeah. Anyway, with that, we're going to yeah, take a sure. break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about trade deadlines. And uh, we're coming up on the, we're coming up on the final days of that here in the next couple of weeks. So. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I never get back with me. Root, root, root for the home they don't win, it's a shame, for it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Shop kids baseball shirts at 9plusss.com. Welcome back, baseball family, to our third and final segment of this week's podcast. We want to talk about the trade deadline. And while we could spend an inordinate amount of time talking about all the different teams, what they need, you can read that in other places. What we're going to bring you is some of the most interesting highlights, maybe vignettes, if you'd like to call them that, from around the league that we think you should be paying attention to because they support our meaningless predictions. 
So <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was the most honest. You you feel okay about that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Brad and I both agree that the AL West is a significant. Uh, there's potential for turnover and and a lot of change, a lot of shift could take place in the AL West. Mm-hmm. The a the uh, NL West also has the potential to have tremendous shift, mm-hmm. uh, but 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 less right. Right. I mean, it's interesting that the Dodgers are going to win that division. Go ahead. They are. It's all going to even out. The Rockies are on in first place right now, but the Dodgers are going to win it. And I feel like that's yes. I feel confident saying that. And so it really it's just who's going to get second place. <laughs> and and I feel like second place is pretty yeah. wide open in that division with who you've got there. Well, it is. It is. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've, I I uh, yeah. Not to mention the Padres. Like, let's just not forget how awesome the Padres are right now. And let's not keep, you know, I'm telling you, watch these Padres this year. Okay. Yeah. For so, sure. we're going to talk about the Padres. Um, okay. In the AL West, we're talking about the o- Oakland Athletics. I think they present a – I mean, they just need bats, specifically left-handed bats, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that what we kind of de- – decided yeah they're they're one of those teams they actually are, are pretty well off pitching um yeah I, I mean i feel like this year with the bullpens especially because they've gone up they're up to 28 men on the roster and it's going to be that way for the rest of the season and w- yeah what teams do when they add an extra couple guys they, they throw them in the bullpen and that's right so you're getting guys who may or may not be ready to pitch at the big league level and bullpens i, f- I feel like this year bullpens have been down I, They've been way down. I know. Like, I feel the same way. Even in the even the hot bullpens are like, come on, man, yeah, pull it together. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, the fact that the A's actually have somewhat of a bullpen that they put together and they can hold leads late, and that they just need bats, uh, that's going to go a long way to getting them into the postseason. Like they're gonna yep. they're gonna be comfortable going into September. So. Good on them for having a bullpen, but got to get some left-handed bats because you're facing a lot of right-handed pitching. <laughs> That's right. Well, and their right-handed bats are are solid. I mean, I think they they can carry them if they can just trade for one or I don't know. At, at this point, with the season the way it is, mm-hmm. asking for two solid trades uh-huh. in any situation, I think is really a tall order. Honestly, yeah, I think you have to pick the one. I think you have to pick the one gap you need to fill, top priority, and get the one guy you need to get, and that's it. That's all you can really hope for. You might, I mean, you might get some chips in the process, but the point is, fill one gap. Yeah. I think this season. Well, and really, what it is, they've got Matt Olson, who's a left-handed. Right. He he bats left-handed, um, but you've got to have another left-handed bat in the lineup besides just the one. Yep. So. Yeah. Yes. So. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's right. So I look for the A's to make a move for somebody who bats left-handed. I, I mean, I'm not going to even go there because I'm so bad at projecting trades. But I feel like that's <laughs> I something. I don't know who it would be either. <laughs> but yeah. So tell us about the Astros because you you have an opinion on. I do how have the an Astros opinion about the Astros. Look to trade. I, I do. Th- I think the Astros will probably need to trade for a new trash can uh, because that seemed to be their MVP. <laughs> Over the last three years, because currently, I have the Houston Astros as a team batting uh, two fifty one, not great, um, <laughs> striking out a whole bunch again. So yeah, one hundred two, one hundred two strikeouts already. So, so who makes the best trash can? Is it Hefty or I mean, I'm per, you've I'm figure durability. I'm a Rubbermaid guy. Okay, uh, Rubbermaid. <laughs> so. I'd go yeah, with the I'd go with the good. Rubbermaid trash can, uh, nice and durable. Oh, yeah. I think it can take a beating it is from durable. from the from the bats there, and and if you hit it just right, it'll have good acoustic and carry throughout, the, especially an empty stadium. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so I, <laughs> I recommend recommend the Astros trade for Rubbermaid, <laughs> maybe a six pack and a and a bucket of balls for Rubbermaid. And uh, they need glove mallet. Get a glove mallet. Yeah. And by the way, if you're gonna get a glove mallet. This is unscripted. <laughs> you go to Jaw Bats, J A W Bats, yeah. and get yourself a glove mallet. Those guys, those dudes over there, are making the most amazing baseball bats and glove mallets uh-huh. I've ever seen. 
They're fantastic. They're they're their painting, their design work is phenomenal. Yeah. So if you need if you need a glove mallet, and we're going to recommend this to the Houston Astros, it, that they need to go to Jaw Bats and get themselves a glove mallet to bang on their Rubbermaid. Very yeah. good, Brad. Yeah, I love it. That's what I recommend for the Astros. Now uh, we're going to call on you again, okay. Brad, because the, we're going to go to the Mariners, <laughs> um, which I know you happen to have an encyclopedic knowledge of, and and, and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> my wife says that I have a bank of just like useless knowledge in my brain. And that's part of it is I have just like endless hallways. And like you said, encyclopedias of like Mariners facts that mean absolutely nothing because they don't win. It's like, if it was a winning team, like, Oh, this guy has a thing. No, his thing is that he knows a whole bunch about a losing team, but, uh, <laughs> but no, oh, the Mariners man. like desperately need a bullpen. Um, okay. I think they, I think they've kind of figured out a closer. Carl Edwards Jr. closed out the Angels the other night. Um, okay. Which is, I think, is saying something when you had because I'm pretty sure he faced um, Trout and Pujols and Otani yeah. to close out the game. Yeah. So there you go. But between the starter and the closer, man, it's a mess. It is a freaking mess. <laughs> like they've got. <clears throat> um, I've got this kid who came out there. His name is Joey Gerber, and he's he's he was drafted a couple years ago. I want to say he's like twenty four, but I thought he was I thought he was drafted this year. I could have swore that like I, I thought he was drafted this year out of high school, and maybe he even graduated early because oh, I thought no. he he looks like he's fifteen. <laughs> he, Ger- he has is he the Gerber is he the Gerber baby? He's the Gerber the baby. It's it's oh. funny. It's funny. I'm going to paint the picture <laughs> of this kid for you. So his his bill is completely flat. Okay, bill completely flat. He's got yeah. he's got curly hair coming out the back, and he he comes into the game. He's I've seen him pitch two games now already, but both times he just came in there, his eyes were huge, deer in the headlights. <laughs> he's got this goofy delivery oh. where oh, and he's got a, he's got a socks pulled up. So and he's wearing like the really cool like stance socks. Uh, which nice. is, is fine because I'm all for that. But uh, yeah. the way that he wears it, it makes him look like a high schooler even more. But he's got this goofy oh, delivery no. where he he crouches down with his with his stride, but he stays crouched. He doesn't ever stand up. That his crouch is where he gets his power from. And so it looks okay. really weird the, the first time you watch. It's like, yeah, he's got some work to do on his mechanics, but maybe that's just what he does. But no, this kid huh. for real. He got in. He got in there. Three up, three down. He's good. But as he's yeah. walking to the dugout, he's still just deer in the headlights, just looking around like, this, this is yeah. a really big stadium that I'm pitching in right now. And, and there are no fans. I'm not sure and... quite how to take this. <laughs> but Just so Mr. Gerber knows, we are here, the us fans. We just Yeah, and he might there. be the best. Fine. He might be the best reliever the Mariners have right now, just because nobody well, knows what to think of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, and honestly, at that point, yeah, that's a good point. But I mean, given the situation with no fans, it might be a better position for him to be in with no mm-hmm. pressure and significantly yeah. less, you know, stimuli and all that other garbage. Yeah, so, definitely. I mean, maybe that could be a great thing for him. Bring up all their minor leaguers, throw them into the fire with no fans, because it'd what do be you care? significantly cooler. You don't so, care about their kids. No, yeah. I don't care about their kids. So. <laughs> Absolutely okay, not. so the <laughs> the Angels just need bullpen help at this point. I think they do. That that's yeah, the only thing the only thing standing in their way is is some relief help, and and then otherwise they should, for all intents and purposes, and, especially if you look on paper, should be good to go. And they they got to get on Drelton Simmons back. Um, yes, because he's defensively, offensively, he's a stud for them. He yes. is a big deal, but it looks like he's progressing slowly from an injury that i cannot remember for the life of me what it was i don't remember what it was either i'm looking right now i'm looking um left ankle sprains that can take time that can take time to come back from but honestly if the mariners if sorry the mariners if the angels can stay close if they can get that bullpen figured out and they get him back in time to for like a final push into the playoffs they'll be good yes yeah because i agree they're not that far off no no i think if they kind of level out a little bit they'll be good to go yeah, and with Joe Madden there, he'll find a way. You just watch. He'll, he, yeah, that he guy will. talk about adapt and overcome. I mean, that he's the king poo mm-hmm. at that. So, yeah, um, sure. as, as, So when we get down to Texas, to Arlington, right? We're talking about the Rangers. Uh-huh. Um, I believe 
that it's time for them to throw in the towel and just start trading people away. <laughs> and but not everybody feels that way, and I think that's fine. Um, well, I'm but sure I mean, that they're not feeling rocky. that way because they they've got to have some some reason for people to buy tickets in that brand new warehouse stadium. It's brand new. Like they're, it, it was very. They've expensive. christened it with no fans. They they've got a, if they don't have a product that that people are gonna buy tickets for, like if they have a bunch of nobodies, people aren't gonna buy season tickets for that. They gotta sell season tickets. So I don't think they're gonna trade yeah. anybody away. I think they're gonna yeah. keep as many names as they can, going into next season. I mean, I'm sure they they're call, looking forward to next season. Do you think they should call Pudge and see if he wants to come back? <laughs> he could probably play for him. <laughs> He probably could at this point. He's probably, he's like anchor the team. Somebody knows yeah. how to win. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that could be a good option. I'm just saying. Hey, you don't have you to know. trade for anybody either. There's no deals on the you know like across the table with anybody else. You just go yeah. get Pudge and say, "Come back, man." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Why not? Why not? That's yeah. all tickets. That's all. Sell that would it would <laughs> that's what i'm saying that's that's why i thought of that because you said we need to sell tickets and i said we'll just bring back punch everybody will be so happy yeah. um yep. all right so the braves atlanta here here where mm-hmm. i am um josh donaldson obviously no longer with the braves right and really the hot corner and third base i mean they need other help too but it's mostly stability help at that point but i think the well, biggest gap that they have is that I mean, we got problems behind the plate too. Don't we? Well, don't, yeah, I mean, that that'll resolve itself, though. Right. Uh, m- my thought is they need another starting pitcher because Soroka is Mike Soroka tore his Achilles. He is done that's right for a considerable right. amount of time, I'm sure. And Foltowitz so, or whatever his name is is gone. He's yeah. out. Yeah, so, they paid him. Yeah, so maybe maybe there are two gaps that they need to fill top priority style. And that's a problem. Like I said earlier, I think you can only fill one in this season with the, the, the I mean, there aren't that many guys just sitting around waiting to be traded uh, that are available. Right. There aren't that many guys being waiting to be picked up either. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I say you can only fill one gap. And if they need to fill more than one, it, it could be a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. The Braves could be in trouble potentially. Like you said, stability of third base, they're down some pitching. Um, yeah. who knows, like, like I said, catching will resolve itself, but you don't know how long that's going to take. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is they, a time game. Issues. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to get everything together in time to be able to make a run at their division. I would, cause Miami's playing really well right now. Who lo- who knows how yeah. long that's going to last sit on sure. top of the division. Never thought I'd yeah. say that. Um, <laughs> I expect Philly to do well. Yeah. Um, the Nats are hit and miss. <laughs> they are. You don't know what you're going to get from the Nats day to day, which is kind of expected. With Dude, they the just got they demolished lost. by Baltimore today, 11-0 to zero yeah. or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> they did. They did. You're like, what? And, yeah. Did Chris Davis zero. come out of his coma or something? Like, what happened? It's about time. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> anyway, that was, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> It's it's been a concern. Maybe yeah. he has been. I don't know. It's bad. Know. But and I don't expect the Mets to be bad all year because they, like I said, no. they were they were bad last year, but not terribly bad because they were in the they were in the mix there for a little bit. Oh if they yeah, can get in the no. mix for a little bit, they can make a run. So this is the year for them to do it for anybody it like is. that, and that's where yeah. that's where that's going to bring me to San Diego. Okay. Because I've been banging the San Diego drum, and this this San Diego team, if they can finish, if they can figure out their bullpen, then they're yeah. going to be rock solid, and they might make a run at these Dodgers. I I don't know that they'll win the division over LA, but they could, they could. Some things would have to go wrong on the other yeah. end, yeah, and that's part of the problem. But they're going to pick up that second slot. I, I think they will. I mean, I, I I was banging the Padres drum last year. Yeah, and I know look, you were. Look out for these especially guys. Especially with They've Tatis. Fernando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I say Tatis is back, and he's playing out. He's playing really well right now. Yeah. I mean, we saw him hit like a 1,000-foot home run the other night. So at least a 1,000. At least, yeah. 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 So he's, he's playing really well right, right now outside of that. Machado 
is due. I feel he's like good. he's he's doing okay but, though. It's I mean it's not bad. He's due, but it's not terrible. Yeah. But no, they're 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 put together well. They're a young team too, um, but they could they could hit this year. They could hit this year and and yes. very well take that second spot in, in the in the West. But they like just about everybody else. They got to sort out sort out a bullpen. Yeah, it's very common. Now look, just to give everybody perspective, today's August seventh. You're probably listening to this on the. 10th or 11th or whatever we mm-hmm. we are you know literally getting to the playoffs like right now <laughs> you know? oh, it feels like it. okay so just don't yeah. <laughs> don't sleep on this season because it's happening very very quickly and mm-hmm. um even me like i didn't watch much baseball all week and i'm thinking oh no like i feel like i missed a ton uh mm-hmm. and it's you know it's, I just consumed less baseball this week than I usually do, but but I'm lamenting that because I don't have time. You can't miss it. Yeah. So pay attention. These yep. all these little nuances are going to have major impact, protracted impact later on. So anyway, that's it. I'll get off my soapbox. Yeah. No, I mean you're absolutely right. Like we said, the the Braves, the Braves are a team who could absolutely have things ruined by this short season. 162 games. The issues they have right now. No problem. Nope. No problem. At Zero all. problem. But a sixty game season with those issues, that then you hit panic mode. I feel like. You feel like, okay, what do we need to do right now, today, to solve this problem, to get everything back on track? Because they were I mean, I'm I'm sure that they were assuming the East was theirs. The division I think was they theirs were. to lose. Yeah. So I don't know. So But that's not the case. Anyway, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. So anyway, just a uh, baseball family with that. I will tell you the answer to those woes is the Theragun. Um, they're not paying me to say that. I just bought one and it's the best. <laughs> if you can't afford a Theragun, that's fine. Uh, Tiger Bomb Ultra is another solution to all your woes. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I'm going to start. I'm going to superimpose these products onto your screen. Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Find them at your local, I don't know. Anyway, the point is, uh, don't Find forget them at to shop. your local Nats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, baseball family, check it out. Jump on the shop at 9plusus.com. We got new stuff coming out all the time. Now that we're starting to see the temperatures wane a little bit, don't worry. We have sweatpants coming. We have hoodies on there now and more to come for your cold weather fans and uh jump on there find yourself something nice nine plus us.com sure thing spell it out n-i-n-e-p-l-u-s-u-s.com go get it the baseball family don't forget to like subscribe rate and review the podcast we want to grow the podcast grow the community Uh, thanks for joining us everybody we will catch you next week